Cornering is a skill we can all improve on. Get it right and it can make us go faster. We can also make us feel more comfortable on the bike and save us energy. But it can take a lot of practice to get good in all different sides of corners and in all different types of conditions. But what if there are some tips that I could give you to take your cornering to a whole new level? So in this video, I've roped in the GCN stick to show us all how it's done. But I should warn you though, some of this advice, while well, totally contradicts everything that we've all been taught. So listen close. So today I've got Alec Briggs, a pro rider who have made cornering his speciality. Now he's spoken to the likes of Vincenzo Nibali and Matej Mohoric, all about the art of cornering in his latest documentary on GCN Plus. But today he's here to teach us some tips that we can put into practice. And one top tip that has completely blown my mind. Now it has to be said, I love cornering. I've used it to my advantage on multiple occasions during racing. That being said, though, I have taken it a few, well, a little bit far on a few occasions. Ah! No! Okay, okay, I'll get you. A oh, lot boy. of occasions. What? Phew! How you doing, man? Oh, it's good to see you, buddy. Good to see you, too, yeah. bro. So Are what am I doing here, I bet you're wondering? Yes, man. Well, a little birdie told me that you want some pointers if you're cornering. I need some tips. But I know how good you are, because the first time I ever came aware of you was watching you banging it through a downhill chicane at Tour Series like nobody else on that circuit. So, you were definitely using a technique on that day called trail breaking, which is breaking in the corner, which I know everyone at home is going, but I thought you're supposed to just break in a straight line and not break around the corner. But today we're going to do it and we'll be safer and faster. Are you in? All our secrets are going to be completely blown out of water. Yeah, but they'll be safer people on the road. They'll true, have a better time. True. And true. let's be honest, no one's ever catching you, bro. Right, let's hit the corners, <laughs> buddy. <laughs> Before we dive straight in, make sure you check out the GCN Plus documentary, Corner Like a Pro, where Alec delves into the deep art of cornering. He meets pro riders, tries out different disciplines, and pushes his ability to the max. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, that means if you break in the corner, it, that's basically going against everything we've learned because what we've learned is that doing that reduces the traction on your front and rear wheel and you're going to well, wash out, slide out, crash and die. To a degree, yes, but you're an athlete. We're getting marginal gains here. We're going to push you to the absolute limit. If we can get you in control of your brakes, you're going to maximise the speed you can go around a corner. So, trail braking increases your control and ultimately increases the speed you can go around a corner. Yeah, and it makes you safer too. Wicked when you go out descending alpine descents or you go on holiday with your bike. All right. Wicked skill to learn. This is a skill we need to get on. You ready? Yes. Right now, traditionally, as Hank said, we get all of our braking done before the turn. But with trail braking, we're going to maximise the potential to brake as late as possible. Now, by trail braking, I mean braking around the turn and into the turn. Usually a no-no, because it does reduce traction. But when done well, we can be in control, go a little bit faster into the turn, and carry a little bit more speed out. So, how we trail brake? We're going to go into the turn, just as we normally would, but as we brake a little bit later, carrying a bit more speed, we're going to start hovering on that back brake. And what that's going to do is it's going to control our speed, particularly good for downhill descents. If we're off the brakes going down a hill corner, we're only going to build up speed. But by being in control of the back brake and feathering it gently, it keeps us in control. So just be mindful of which way your brakes are. In this video, my back brake's on the right, but in the UK, it's usually given on the left. Right, now we've talked about how to trail brake, it's time for Hank to give it a go. Now, it is wet, it's slippy, and this corner is even a little bit off camber. So it's going to be hard. I think he's got it. Remember, just nice and soft and gentle on the back brake. You're coming in hot, mate. Jesus. I mean, nailed it. What more can you say? It 
He was fast, smooth, and controlled. There was even a bit where I thought he came in too hot, but because he was braking so late and able to stay on the brakes, he made it around the corner perfectly. It's pretty slow, isn't it? That feels good, though. Mate, you looked good. And you know what? You even got me nervous how hot you were coming in. I was oh, I thought I'd trust in your skill. Or you trust in your own skill, yeah. man. Yeah. I've seen you do it many times before, but what was so evident, yeah. where you were dragging that back brake, I could just see that you're coming to the corner, slowing down, as soon as you hit the apex, let go of the brake, you maximise how quick you go around that turn. You can also control where you hit the apex. Yeah. So that if you're slightly offline, you can readjust without you know, being at mercy to the speed. Exactly, and you think you're out descending with your mates or you're in a bunch going down a hill, someone makes a mistake in front of you, you've got the ability to correct it. Yeah. You're not just sitting there going, oh crap. No, exactly. You know, One thing I would say though, is you've got to be instinctive on the brake and the pressure you're applying. So if you're new to this game, definitely try and work on understanding your braking and where you're gonna lock up and where you're not, is that right? Completely, like every time I do a crit in the first sort of five laps out of maybe 30 or 40 will do, I always lock up the back brake a little bit going into turns and that then gives me the information, okay, that's where the limit is, I won't go past that. No. So it is, you'll learn to get better and better at like reading when your brakes and your tires will give way, but that's just something you're gonna pick up naturally over time. So talking of brakes, how has the application of disc brakes allowed trail braking and all these new different skills and tips to gain you extra speed in corners? Disc brakes have been absolutely amazing with doing that because they're so much better at modulating. We can be on the brakes along long without them building up heat and changing the way they bite. With a disc brake, it's so consistent. The information you're gonna get on one day is probably gonna be quite similar to what you'll get the next day. But on rim brakes, that could change every now and then depending on where you were. And depends on the conditions. So I think we've mastered trail braking in corners solo, but what if people want to do it in a group, you know, around people in a peloton in the group ride? Man, it's the same principles. And what's great about learning to trail brake, it keeps you a bit more control of your bike. So if someone makes a mistake in front of you, you're kind of in the position to correct it a little bit more, and not crash into them. So, so when I start doing stuff like this, yeah. <laughs> Get out of it! Get out of it! <laughs> and it's when you're kind of knocking against each other. Exactly. Oh, f up, yeah. yeah, I'm a bit of this, bit of that. You know, you're on the brakes, yeah. you're covering it. But you're covering it. it. You're yeah. covering it. Come on, get on. So, how can we put riding in a group and trail braking into practice to give us an advantage during racing? Big one is dive bombing and moving oh. up. Everyone will tell you you can't dive bomb. It's a no-no in racing. But you have to do it. There's a point where you go, you know what? I've got to move up. I've got no choice. Sorry, mate. Got to do it. But if you do it safely, you do it smoothly, I don't really care too much. And also, it saves you energy. So how do we dive bomb correctly, safely, and so we all don't be called a <laughs> <laughs> So I would personally try and stick to as close as the racing line as I can and try and not just slam it up the inside, slow the brakes on and disrupt all the bunch behind you. You want to kind of just slowly sneak up and by learning to trail brake, you can brake that little bit later and just get to the corner a little bit quicker than them. And you slide in front of them and just have to give way. You're not too aggressive. It's all done smoothly. Everyone's happy. No one even blinks an eyelid. Right, let's see that in practice behind the bike. Yeah, all right. Who's dive bombing? <laughs> all right, rock, paper, scissors, ready? Oh. All right, so winner, winner gets dive bombed, yeah? Okay. One, rock, two, paper, three, scissors, go. draw. Rock, paper, scissors, draw. Ooh. You dive for me. So normally, we do it nice and gently, not disrupting Hank too much. If we could Hank, we can just shove that away. Oh, <laughs> oh he just shoved <laughs> Then that is how not to dive bomb someone. All right, now we've seen how not to dive bomb, we're gonna try and do it correctly. I'm gonna slide up the inside of him, nice and smoothly, just oh. breaking a little bit later than he does. But look, I'm still on the brakes, slowing down my speed. And now I can let off him and back on the power and see you later, Hank, bro. And we won the race, you know what I'm saying? Look how mad he is, look. So mad. Whoa. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, so we've taught the guys how to trail break, but what if there are some viewers out there that are a bit nervous? You know, they head to the Alpine climbs, do a great big sportive, but then absolutely brick it when the road turns the other way and they hit the descent. What can we give them Fair to point. kind of make it a little bit easier? 
Fair point, man. Well, there's the basics of cornering, right? We use both of our brakes evenly. It's always a great place to start before we start trail braking. As we approach a corner, the rule of thumb is you go in as wide as you can, you go in tight around the corner, and you drift wide back out again. And a good way to help you do that is by trying to look around the turn. Often, it's so easy to look just in front of your front wheel, especially when you're scared and nervous, like see what's coming. But if you're looking as far up as you can, you can spot any dangers, work out where the road's gonna go and just feel a bit more comfortable about what line you're gonna take. But the biggest one for me, which I think people always do, is they tense up and they grip the bars really tight. And what that does, it makes the bike really rigid. It's hard to move. If we keep a nice relaxed grip and we always make a mental note to check ourselves, make sure we're not gripping the bars too tight, that allow everything to flow really nicely. Because if we start getting scared and gripping the bike really tight, everything will go out the window. So there you are, a few tips that you can implement wherever you are in the world. I hope you've enjoyed that and hope you've kind of taken on a few of the tips from Alec and uh, put them into practice when you come to riding good corners. Let us know in the comment section below if you've enjoyed it. And don't forget to check out the GCM Plus documentary that Alec goes into pure depth into the art of cornering. And I guess, well, I'll see you in the next video. And if you want Alec to come back on, get in that comment section below. Cheers, brother. Um, I'll beat you in rad race next year. You got no chance. I'm going to leave you hanging all night long, buddy. Damn.